Congenital hyperinsulinism affects at least one out of every 50,000 children born worldwide, and it's the most common cause of persistent hyperinsulinism in children. The hypoglycemia caused by this disorder is typically severe and can be associated with seizures and neurodevelopmental problems. The Congenital Hyperinsulinism Center at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia has treated over 400 patients with this disorder, and because of the complexity of this disease, we advocate for coordinated care by multiple subspecialists with expertise in the diagnosis, treatment, and long-term management of congenital HI in order to optimize patient outcomes. Congenital HI is caused by unregulated insulin secretion from beta cells in the pancreas. Normally, your beta cells sense increased blood glucose and metabolize it via glycolysis, which increases intracellular ATP levels and closes the ATP-gated potassium channel on the surface of the beta cell. This in turn depolarizes the cell membrane and opens the voltage-gated cal calcium channel. Then increased intracellular calcium activates insulin granules diffused through the plasma membrane and release their contents. In addition, other pathways can also stimulate insulin secretion from beta cells, although to a lesser degree. Diagnosis of HI depends on assessment of laboratory values at the time of hypoglycemia. These laboratory tests include a variety of hormones and biomarkers, as well as a glucagon stimulation test to help rule in HI, in addition to a number of other metabolic parameters to rule out other causes of hypoglycemia. Once HI is diagnosed, it is important to determine the underlying cause. Mutations in at least nine genes that regulate beta cell insulin secretion have been identified to date as causes of congenital HI. The most commonly mutated genes are those that encode for the SUR1 and KIR6.2 subunits of the ATP-gated potassium or KATP channel. However, activating mutations in other genes that stimulate insulin secretion or inactivating mutations that normally decrease insulin secretion can also lead to HI. In addition to dextrose or glucagon, which raise blood glucose levels directly, there are two primary medical therapies available for the treatment of HI. Diazoxide binds to and opens the KATP channel, thus limiting cell depolarization and decreasing insulin secretion. However, it's only effective in patients with functional KATP channel subunits, so the only other medical therapy for option for patients with these types of mutations is octreotide. Octreotide inhibits the voltage-gated calcium channel to decrease insulin secretion. However, it is often insufficient to keep blood glucose in a safe range due to the severity of HI in these patients, and many of these patients require surgery to remove part of their pancreas. Patients with KTP channel mutations may have either focal or diffuse forms of HI, meaning that either only a part of their pancreas or the entire pancreas is affected. Patients with focal HI can be cured with a partial pancreatectomy that removes only the affected portion of the pancreas, while patients with diffuse HI may require removal of the majority of their pancreas if medical therapies are insufficient. Therefore, proper diagnosis of these patients and localization of focal lesions are critical to obtain the best outcomes. Important advances in genetic testing, in addition to improved localization of focal lesions by imaging, have allowed for improved accuracy of diagnosis and tailored medical and surgical therapy. Unfortunately, current therapies are not without significant risks and side effects. Therefore, these patients require long-term follow-up by a pediatric endocrinologist. More research is needed regarding new therapies to treat congenital HI, as well as to evaluate long-term outcomes. However, it is also critical for primary care providers, emergency medicine physicians, and neonatologists to detect persistent hypoglycemia and to involve experienced pediatric endocrinologists as soon as possible in order to minimize long-term effects of recurrent hypoglycemia.